Hello, thank you for joining us. This is Salt of the Streets, review preview for the months of July and August for our book club. My name is Donovan. Our July book was 1776 by David McCollum. And so we're going to be talking about this this month. Um, but I am going to tell you that this, this review preview is going to be different than anything else that I've ever done. And so I have something that I've prepared here that we're going to go over and then we'll talk a little bit about this book. This is another one that I picked up. Um, we'll even talk about this for a second first because this is very last minute. I originally had a different book slated for August that was about the Cold War and French and American relations. Something that I'm interested in, a book that I have heard nothing but good things about, but it just isn't aligning with where my head is out currently. So this book I picked up yesterday while in Port Townsville, Colin, it is called Don't Hurt People and Don't Take Their Stuff, a Libertarian Manifesto. It's by Matt Kiby, Matt Kiby. I'm not sure how you say his last name. Um, I've never heard of this book before, but I was looking around. I found it yesterday. So I will read, let's see, I'll read the back and then we'll move on. We can talk about, we'll do the page and pace um, and then we can talk about when the live streams will be and then I will read this portion. So we'll do a pre-re this month instead, but it, it doesn't matter. It's still the repre no matter what. So the back of this book says, don't hurt people and don't take their stuff. Simple and straightforward. That's liberty in a nutshell. And yet it seems that more and more the decisions CEOs and Washington bureaucrats make about what we do for us or to us or even against us are having an increasingly adverse impact on our lives and freedoms. From Matt Kiby, the influential leader of Freedom Works, don't hurt people and don't take their stuff is the first true manifesto of a new libertarian grassroots movement in which Kiwi clearly articulates the case for freer people, more voluntary cooperation, and solving problems from the bottom up. And the rules for liberty is another portion that's here at the bottom, so I'll read these. Number one, don't hurt people. Free people just want to be left alone, not hassled or harmed by someone else's agenda or designs on their life or property. Two, don't take people's stuff. America's founders fought to ensure property rights and our individual rights to the fruits of our labor. Number three, take responsibility. Liberty means responsibility. Don't sit around waiting for someone else to solve your problems. We talk about personal responsibility a lot here on Salt of the Streets. Number four, work for it. For every action, there is an equal reaction. Work hard and you will be rewarded. Number five, mind your own business. Free people live and let live. Number six, fight the power. Take a stand against corrupt authority. So, like I said, I've never heard of this book before, but I think it'll be fantastic. We have, we'll do page and pace now. New York Excellent. Times bestseller, too, from the looks of it. New York Times bestseller, that's right. Um, and so, looks like we have, these are the acknowledgments. The last page is 227. That's pretty good. This one will be an easy one. Like I said, I try and keep them under 350 because I want to keep it reasonable for everybody. So 227, and we're going into August. So there's 30 days in August, right? So divided by 37 and a half, seven and a half pages a day. That is nothing. That is unquestionably 31. 31. So it's going to be like seven pages a day. So 30, 31 days, seven pages a day. But it's no problem. That is unquestionably the lowest one that we've had. I think that 1776 was nine and a half pages a day or like 9.8, something like that. So this one will be easy as far as the live streams go. Let's see. The live streams where we do it on Tuesdays, we will call them the 9th, the 16th, and the 23rd. That's what we're going to call the live streams for this month. Look at that. Colin just pulled it up on Amazon. $15.99 on Amazon, which is perfect. We wanted to keep them all $15 or less. Look, you can even get it on sale. Kindle for $11.49. We've had a bunch of people. I'm going to say most of the people that I've talked to are doing them through audiobook. I don't care. We're still having perfectly effective conversation about them, even though they're through audiobook. It doesn't matter. I, 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 have, I have always said and will always say, I think you will get more out of reading a physical book, but you can get just a very similar amount out of the audiobook and there's there's no problem with it. I don't I don't, I would never fault anyone for the audiobook. So, page and pace, that's really easy. 7 pages a day and like I said the 9th, the 16th and the 23rd for the live streams for this book. So, that's really easy. Um why did I pick this book? I'm in a I'm in a real weird mindset lately as far as personal morals. This started with the episode that we're going to do today with Jake Lines. Um, this obviously, as you're seeing this, we, this episode has already come out. But he asked Colin and I about like our founding principles and where they came from. And that sent me down a rabbit hole of really trying to find where those things came from. And that's a process that we have started a while ago um, that I think has just kind of intensified over the last few weeks and months. And... Um, has admittedly caused a lot of internal turmoil, but I think that that's a good thing in a process like this. And 
this is just aligning more with where I'm finding that my principles are. And if you've been watching this show for any extended period of time, then you have seen the shift that has happened in this show from like constitutionally based rights to individually and naturally based rights. And so you, you can kind of understand where these things are coming from. So that's how I arrived at this book. I'm really excited to read it. I'm excited to do more on it. Um, Colin and I are already talking about the type of books that we're going to do next year for the book club. I tossed around doing different communist works so that we could kind of read through them and take them apart and understand what we were going against. Um, and now we're also talking about going through different anarchist works so that we can tr try and discover where our roots are. Um, at this point, I am trying to decide what I think is the most dominant threat, I guess. What I think is the most likely thing for us to have to deal with, whether it is that we will be in this system for an extended period of time and we will be trying to preserve this system and that that is the right way to go, or if I think that a more revolutionary approach is the way to handle this. So we will f figure that out together, I guess, as we go down the path. So with that, um, I'll talk a little bit about this book, 7076. Um, it was a fantastic book. It was excellent. I loved every bit of it. This is the second time that I've read it. I really enjoyed it. This time around, I took something completely different out of it. And so that's what we'll start to get into this now. Um, the Reapery, why am I doing it this way? This time around, the book invokes something different in me. Um, part of it is a second go around. Part of it is the headspace that I'm currently in. Part of it is the world conditions. Um, this book is incredible, but during this reading, it provided context and parallels to what I fear and predict will be our second American revolution. We so easily forget that the Revolutionary War is not just a title, but it is an event that can be repeated and should be repeated when necessary. So we talk a lot about this type of concept on this show. I'm getting emotional only a little bit now. I'm, I'm nervous about this. I'm anxious. Like I said, it's different than anything that I've ever done before. So we talk a lot on this show about the the concept of a national divorce and we approach it that way because ideally it will be a peaceful separation between however many groups of people are involved there and when i work out that uh mental game by myself i have a hard time seeing it end completely peacefully and i think that's how i ended up here and that's why i thought about this book so much the way that i did um really in a militia context and a militia warfare context is, is the way that I viewed this book. Um, so I have a piece here that I'm going to read and we will get into it. Are we serious? If we mean what we say about the illegitimacy of the state, then we should be working actively towards its destruction. This is a scary proposition. None of us have ever known an American system other than the one that we currently exist in, but I know that we all believe that there is something better. It is this same spirit that drove our founding fathers to lead what I believe will be our first great American revolution, and it is that same spirit that will inspire ours. We can and must operate in the system that we currently inhabit, but I believe we should all be working toward that something better. In the influence and tech culture that we live in, I believe those with less to lose stepping forward to put money and effort towards these ideals will help inspire those with more to lose to make the final leap into revolution those with more to lose should not be our leaders but they can serve as inspiration and potentially martyrs we as the driving force of this revolution have much work to do to prepare ourselves for the road ahead much of it Considerably basic work that we have been indoctrinated to ignore and abdicate in hopes that we will simply fall in line with our heads down. Number one. The first of these steps will be to identify our founding principles. This is work I'm doing right now and work many of us have been taught to ignore. This is not only necessary for us to understand ourselves and our ultimate goals, but it will give us an idea of how many countries or groups we are likely to end up as. As our country has grown older, the political ideas that divide us have not only grown in number, but also in scale and intensity. The lines that divide us are not as clearly drawn as during our civil war. It is vital that we understand who we can and cannot live next to. During this process, the power and practice of militia style training must be renewed and spread as far as possible. Militias will be our only hope in a civil conflict. Number two. After our founding principles have been outlined, it will be natural for us to select leaders, political, military, etc., very, very carefully. It is almost a stroke of luck that our first president 
had the wherewithal to decline kingship when it was offered to him. Not only must we trust these leaders to guide us through our revolution, but also to concede power when the work is done. And even then, not only concede power so that we may move into our ultimate goal of a decentralized and individually based system, but also not try and seize the available power in whatever number of nations we end up co cohabitating this land with. Number three, after leaders have been selected, I believe it incumbent upon us to clearly state our grievances and intent to secede, holding all hope and leaving all room for an amicable and peaceful national divorce where no blood need be shed. Number four, after principles and leaders are decided along with a violent or nonviolent ending of this union, the division of land will begin so the construction of new systems may take place. This is the step in which I see the most potential for violence and where my decided comprehension of the issue is over. This is one possible scenario for the future I believe we are heading towards. The thing that stood out to me the most in reading this is the militia warfare. A second civil war, in my opinion, will look much more like our first revolution than our first civil war. In the best scenario, we will see small-scale warfare between militias, some independent, and I believe some will become state militias. Either way, they would align in some fashion that fit their self-interest at the time, who are fighting to secure border boundaries. In the worst scenario, our war would be almost mirrored from the first in large bands of small militias that would be involved in active fighting against the United States government. Should this be the case, the lessons we as the militia can and should draw from this book and our history are unending. We will be lesser armed and we will be lesser trained. Both are obstacles that we can handle. There is no doubt we are better situated with arms than we were our, re than were our revolutionary brothers. And while our level of training is likely higher on average, we are by no means where we need to be. This book has recodified for me the vital nature of our militia-style training and further pushes me to find a solid squad that can be trained, standardized, and easily assimilated into a larger force when need be. We should as well prepare ourselves for what the physical makeup of the war will look like. Whatever of our American brothers choose to abdicate their greater moral responsibility and choose to defend the state will be just that, our brothers and comrades. In hopes that enough leave the entity of the state, and even without, we as the militia are likely to see the faces of contractors foreign and domestic. During the first revolution, the pressure and violence felt by the rebels at the hands of the Hessians was horrific. We would be wise to remember that for the government to employ and deploy our equivalent will take a little time and a simple change of active contracts. The conditions we will face will be as severe as our opposition. We must not relent, and we must not be deterred. It is now the time to prepare for these conditions the best that we can. Embrace the suck. Make yourself uncomfortable. Prepare your family and find your tribe. If we believe what we say, we must be serious and embrace the lessons we can and leave behind what has led us astray. The efforts and fruits of our founding fathers were immense, and while the challenges appear the same, our efforts must be greater. This has been the review preview for the months of July and August. I hope that you enjoyed this video. It was different than anything else I've ever done, so I would appreciate the feedback. You can find the rest of our videos on our YouTube at Salt of the Streets, along with our Instagram, our Facebook, our Patreon, and everything else at Salt of the Streets. You can find all this at saltofthestreets.com, including our personal social media. I am at Salt of the Street on Twitter and at alpaca underscore Donovan on Instagram. And Colin is at Big Bird Alfie on both those things. Thank you guys again for watching. Have a fantastic week. Welcome to the south of the streets, coming at you every week with this food for thought. Hope you're ready to eat.